Hi, family. So, it's probably been about a year since I had had a dream and knew or felt it was very significant but didn't know what it meant until sometime later. You know, like weeks later when I was re doing my morning Bible reading and I came across something in scripture and I was like, whoa. So this is all going to tie in. Bear with me. This is going to tie in to the important distinctions to dispensationalism, not hyper dispensationalism, but being a dispensationist uh, as opposed to a covenant theology and the important distinctions between the church, which is made up of both Jews and Gentiles now in this church age, um, and national Israel and, you know, other dispensations. So it's not about a different way to be saved, you know. It's about how God deals with certain people under in different dispensations and um, administrations and things like that and why that's important. But I had had a dream that my husband and I, and in quite a few of my dreams, my husband has represented Jesus Christ. You know, we are the bride of Christ. And the Lord has used him to symbolize him in quite a few of my dreams. And in this dream, it was, I remember when I had the dream, it was, so it has been over a year now because it was in July. I think it was like in late July and we were having a super hot week. You know, we were hundreds, you know, like 104, 105 degree weather every day. And I thought it was so strange that I had a dream that we had walked into Walmart and you know how they have their seasonal aisles up front and it was fall, you know, autumn, fall, seasonal decor up front. And I know in the dream, it was like, I knew it was my husband's birthday. He said he wanted something for his birthday. And we were looking on the seasonal aisles and up on the top shelf, there was a pretty big box with a, a black ceramic pumpkin cooker or grill. Like, um, you could see like this, you could lift the lid of the pumpkin up and I could see a grill grate and it was black and he he said it's finally here he was excited and he wanted it for his birthday and I remember thinking well who would want that and we just kept walking I was pushing the cart we went around and finished our other shopping and then I was like you know he really wants that maybe we should go get it and we put it in the cart and we got it and we brought it home but when we got home it was at my mother's house and my mother in a lot of my dreams her name Judy or Judith means woman of Judea and she has represented Israel in in several of my dreams and this is the house uh, that I grew up in and we went there it was her house and went in and when we went in my aunt Carolyn I have a sister named Carolyn, too, that's been in a lot of my dreams. This is the first time I ever, and the name means song, or song of happiness, or song of joy. And this was the first time I have ever dreamt of my Aunt Carolyn. I haven't seen her in decades. Um, never dreamt of her in my life. I've had a lot of dreams about my sister, Carolyn. She was sitting there in a chair, and on the on one side of the living room and I went and sat in a chair next to her there was an empty chair there and I sat down next to her so basically sat down by you know a song of happiness and across the living room on the other side was my mother was standing up over there and my husband who represented Christ went over and was speaking to her and I had the box that we had purchased with the black pumpkin grill. And now a, a grill or a cooker represents, or an oven represents judgment, and it was black, okay? So that's like wrath and judgment. But when I opened it, inside was it, what was actually inside the box that I opened and took out was like a potpourri, you know, fragrance burner and it was a pumpkin laying on its side it was molded from ceramic to lay on its side and it was orange it wasn't black it was like light orange 
and the lid was on the side of it. And when I opened it, it had potpourri and water in it. And I was like, whoa, this isn't what was on the front of the box. And I called my husband over to look. I said, look, it, this wasn't what was pictured on the box. And he smiled and he said, I like it. He nodded, smiled and nodded, said he liked it. And then I woke up. Well, <clears throat> so later on sometime I was reading. This was like some weeks later. I was reading in Revelation chapter 5, okay? And this is when the elders, which represent us, the raptured church, okay, are around the throne. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty-four elders, the four and twenty-four elders are us, the church, raptured, before, the, before he even begins uh, opening the seals, okay, fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Okay, so I, when I read that, the golden vials full of odors, it reminded me of the potpourri, and it said that they fell down before him, and the, the potpourri burner was laying on its side as if it had fallen over on its side, and it was molded to look like it was laying on its side. And they sung a new song. Remember, I came in and it was the first time I dreamt of my Aunt Carolyn, um, whose name means song or song of happiness or song of joy. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Okay. That's part of the inheritance we share. We share everything uh, since we're in Christ, all the promises that God made to Christ. We uh our partakers in his inheritance is share the inheritance with him. So when I read that and it had those two elements in it and I'm like, wow. Okay. Well, I'm still going somewhere with this. Now I am pretty sure I've shared this with you guys before. I don't, except for the people that I have that are new subscribers, but, um, so it's probably a little, I don't think it's been quite a year since I had the, a vision and a word when I was waking up in the morning. One time I saw like four different very large, widely accepted YouTube channels considered part of the grace community. Okay. Um, not people I personally watch, although I used to years ago. But I saw them like one, I saw them flash the pictures of, and then I heard in my spirit, I heard they are untrustworthy. They are singing two different songs. Okay. And so let's look here also. Okay. And this is talking about the 144,000. And I looked and lo, a lamp stood on the mount. Mount Sion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. 
These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Again, a first fruits is the first of something with more to come promised. And they were the first fruits, okay, of what? The new covenant as the Jews from uh, national Israel. No guile found on their mouth, just like there's a scripture. I wish I pulled it up, I believe, where uh, Jesus is prophesied like that, to have no guile in his mouth, no lie. Um it's a different uh, administration and spirituality. Same, saved the same way, you know, by faith in Jesus Christ. It's a remnant saved by faith in Jesus, by his blood, forgiveness of sins, and the indwelling Holy Spirit. But there's still a, a, a different administration and spirituality for the church than there is for national Israel in this next dispensation, okay? So what, see how they have their own song that no one else can learn? And the 24 elders had a, had a song, their song. And so that was something else that I didn't understand at first when I first heard it, and I had to take it to the Word. Singing a different, singing two different songs, what do you mean, Lord? Something all of these channels had, had in common is that they were mixing and confusing dispensations, okay? Most true grace people, or as far as I know, all true grace preacher people are dispensationalists, dispensationists, okay? Um, because when you mix, when, you, when you're into like covenant uh, theology, you end up, mixing national Israel and the law with the mystery of the church and the body of Christ in this dispensation. And uh, it just, it introduces leaven. Let's put it that way. And it's too long to explain in all the ways it does that now, but also... If you, what, what all of these channels are do, were doing is that they were uh, sensationalist, not really being ministers of reconciliation for the church to the body of Christ, but teaching so much, they were blurring the lines between the tribulation you know, Jacob's trouble and the dispensation we're in now for the church and causing fear for the church and getting them confused. Um, because I guess that stuff gets viewers. I don't know. You know, all the sensationalism and, and fear porn and stuff. So it's like they were trying to put us almost into the tribulation right now, you know, you know, and, uh, that's not going to happen until we're out of here. We're going to have our own song to sing. 144,000 have a different song. And now what's become so prevalent is people embracing, uh, the church is Israel Okay, national Israel, and that we're pretty much grafted into Israel rather than grafted into Christ, and putting the terms of the new covenant on the church and other things like that, and and the reason they're doing it, all the people I know that are standing up for that is because they want to say we live by the standard of the law. Okay. And they'll say that we're trying to teach, that we teach people not to walk in newness of life, which couldn't be further from the truth. Newness of life is not trying to follow laws and commandments. Newness of life is walking by the Spirit and faith, you know. Um, and so, anyway, <laughs> it's, 
I just thought that was really cool. And I hope I didn't confuse you guys. I just thought to share that with you. Um, some of you may have already heard this. I probably, I probably haven't addressed it all together at one time like this. But just to offer y'all some assurance because things seem a little stormy, a little frightening right now with all that's going on. I mean, I know a lot of people personally um, losing their jobs uh, and things like that. Uh, my, my family as well has had some very big decisions to make that we don't know what's going to happen. You know, I'm just trusting the Lord. Uh, and it feels like we're being squeezed pretty tight right now, you know. But we, we shouldn't doubt, you know, we are not appointed to God's wrath. From the moment Jesus pops open that very first seal, that is his wrath, okay? And we are up there around the throne, before he even does that. And I just want you to be comforted with that fact. And, you know, all these crazies that are saying, well, if you, uh, that I see all over comment sections and stuff saying <laughs> that you're, you're not saved if you take a certain shot or that it's the mark and all this kind of stuff. They're just not reading their Bibles or they've given in to all this baloney sensationalism and stuff like that. Um, so it, it is important. Uh, I think a lot of these people that are embracing that the church is Israel, um, do they even realize all the implications of that? And I think eventually they're going to start noticing that they're losing their assurance of certain things like the pre-trib rapture. And because there are a lot of implications for embracing that type of, uh, of doctrine and that theology. And covenant theology is, theology is more like what uh, lordshippers and Calvinists, which our lordshippers teach, and they, they embrace it for that very reason, because they can use it to say, uh, to backload works into the gospel and fruit inspecting and things like that to prove you're saved. Um, and so, you know, people that teach that way to me are untrustworthy for many reasons. So anyway, I just want to share that with you guys. I hope it blessed you. Have a great night.